Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 19 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I want to demonstrate two methods of using markers and arrangement techniques. And by arrangement techniques, I mean taking all of your musical ideas you've come up with or recorded and piecing them together in the correct order to build a musical arrangement or build an instrumental arrangement in this case. Typically, when I write a song, make a beat, or put together most projects, I'll finish the majority of the instrumental portion first before I even think about recording vocals. So that's what this project is. It's completely instrumental. And this is a demo project I made just by using some loops from one of the free live loops templates that are included with Logic. And I'll make this available as a download below if you want to follow along. Now for the two methods, the first is to create markers. You can do this by using the marker global track here, and you can access the global tracks by pressing G on your keyboard to toggle the global tracks, or you can click here to toggle the global tracks. And then I'll just do some manual editing to repeat certain sections and put them in the correct order. The second method uses arrangement markers, which are a little bit different than standard markers. I actually prefer just using standard markers, even though using arrangement markers is actually a bit faster in terms of the editing, but I'll talk about why I prefer using regular markers when I get to that point in the video. And I'll show you both methods anyway, so you can choose whichever method you prefer for your workflow. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Are you a music producer or mixing engineer looking for a better way to work with your clients? Look no further than Boombox.io. The Boombox platform allows you to upload your tracks and receive time-stamped feedback from your clients. This makes it easy to make changes and improvements based on their feedback. Plus, with their secure platform, you can be sure that your tracks are safe and only accessible to those you want to collaborate with. You can sign up for a free account right now and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Or if you need more space than that, they have very affordable options for up to two terabytes of online storage. Okay, so once again, to open the global tracks, you press G. If you don't see marker and arrangement here, you can simply right click or control click up here and you can show your various global tracks. So you can hide and show markers, you can hide and show arrangement markers. Just to sort of simplify this a bit, I'm gonna get rid of my signature as well and just show the markers and arrangement markers. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is start creating markers for each section of my song. So essentially what I have here is an introduction, an intro. Then over here at bar nine, we have the chorus. It'll be used as an instrumental chorus in the beginning of the song. And then at bar 17 is the verse. And then at bar 25 is a bridge section. And then at bar 33 is an outro section or an ending section. So I've got five sections that need to be rearranged into a full song arrangement. So the first way you can create markers is you can simply click this plus button here on the marker global track, and this will create a new marker. You can double click on it and give it a name, so I can call this intro. I actually prefer to make my markers all caps. That just helps me read these things a little bit better. And then I'm just going to press shift and then the period key to jump over by eight bars. Remember that your left and right greater than less than brackets or the comma and period keys will allow you to jump by one bar at a time. Or if you hold shift, you can jump by eight bars at a time. And then if I wanted to create another marker here at bar nine, I could click the plus button again, and I'll call this chorus. Once again, I'll jump over to bar 17. Now there is a shortcut to create markers. If you press option apostrophe, this will also create a marker. So I can call this verse, you can jump over again. And yet one more way you can create markers is you can select a region or multiple regions and then go to marker here and select create markers from regions. And so this will create a marker that is the exact length of the region that I selected, although it automatically colorizes the marker and automatically names the marker. So I personally don't prefer using this method 
but that is another way you can do it. So I'm just gonna press Option Apostrophe again. I'll call this the bridge, and then I'll jump over one more time to the outro, Option Apostrophe, and I'll call this outro. Okay, so the last thing here that's a little tricky is the very last marker you create will just extend out to the end of the song. That's the way Logic does it. And when you overlap markers, it sort of automatically trims them. So what I like to do is go into the lists editors by clicking right here. And then under marker, you'll see each of the markers that you just created. You'll see the beat clock position in bars, beats, divisions, and ticks where it's located. Essentially, you can just pay attention to the very first number there that's gonna tell you what bar that marker is at. And then the length of each marker. Now, by default, it gives you this sort of 0001 length. But if you double click on this and type in, say, eight bars, it will automatically trim the length of that marker to eight bars. You could do this for all of these if you wanted to, if they are all, in fact, the same size, or you could just leave them, uh, you could leave them be if you want as well. So I've trimmed them all to exactly eight bars each. Now, another thing you can do at this point is colorize the markers. You can open your color palette in Logic by going to View, Show Colors, or you can press Option C to toggle this. And what I like to do is just sort of make each section have a different color, just so I can kind of easily identify each section on the timeline. So I'm just gonna select a few different colors here for each one of these, and there we go. Okay, so now the next step is to sort of copy and paste each of these sections where I want them to go. You could just drag over these like this and just kind of move them where you want them to go. Of course, if you're gonna do things that way, you may wanna make sure that you have your snap mode set to bar. And I also recommend setting this to relative value in case you have any regions that are sort of off the grid or if you have a section that starts off the grid. However, there are some really helpful arrangement editing functions that are located here under this edit menu. These are located under the cut insert time menu option here. And the ones I find myself using the most here are cut and copy section between locators and insert section at playhead. Now you can memorize these key commands for these, but you'll probably use these so little that it's not even worth memorizing the key commands unless you do a lot of arrangement work. So the order that I want my song to be in is intro, chorus, verse, then I want another chorus, another verse, another chorus, then bridge, chorus, outro. So what I'm gonna do is place my playhead right here at bar 25, and I'm going to drag the locators over the entire chorus and verse section. And again, I'm using bar snap to make sure this is in the exact correct position. So then what I can do is go to edit, go down to cut insert time, and I'll select copy section between locators. Then what I'll do is with the playhead set right there at bar 25, I'll go back up to edit, cut insert time, and select insert section at playhead. So what you can see is this sort of punches in a new chorus and verse and pushes over the bridge and outro. Now I do need one more chorus right here after the verse. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the verse again. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the verse again. So I'll just select the chorus with the locators, go to edit, cut insert time, copy section between locators, and then go edit, cut insert time, insert section at playhead. And I'm gonna do this again after the bridge because I want one more repetition of the chorus after the bridge. So I'll set the playhead there at 57, cut insert time, insert section at playhead. So now you can see the entire song has been built out. Intro chorus, the first chorus is just gonna be instrumental. Verse chorus, verse chorus, bridge, final chorus. Now, one thing you'll see here is the outro is grayed out, and that's because the end of the song is denoted by this section right here. And you'll also see that your loops will only go to the end of the song. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you drag out the end of the song. The end of the song really doesn't matter. Just place it somewhere after your last section because when you do like a final export of the song or a final bounce of the song, you're going to make a selection anyway and it's gonna bounce that range. So that's not too big of a deal. Another thing you may opt to do if you're using looped regions like this, you may want to convert your loops to real copies. I believe I demonstrated this in a previous video, but what I like to do is just drag over these and press Control L 
and this will convert all of your loops to real copies of the regions. And there you go, I've built out the entire arrangement and the order I wanted. Now, another way to do this is to use arrangement markers. And if you use arrangement markers, it kind of makes the editing process a bit easier. But in the past, I found some glitches with the arrangement markers. I found some issues with arrangement markers properly moving the correct regions over. So especially if you have regions that sort of overlap the section, like if I have like if I have something like this, the arrangement markers don't really deal with that very well, nor do the regular editing functions. It'll sort of split the region, but that will just require some additional manual editing. So what I'm going to do is just take this back a few steps to where I just have my five sections again. And what I'm going to do is under marker here, I'm going to select convert to arrangement markers. And what this will do is it'll create arrangement markers for each marker that you created. And by the way, if you want to create new arrangement markers manually, you can do that by clicking here. And then you can sort of give this a predefined name or you can click rename and you can give this another section, uh, a section name or whatever. And then you can sort of trim this up and set the length of the marker. And you can also colorize these the same way you could with the regular markers. You just press option C to bring up your color pa palette and colorize that marker. The only thing that's tricky with these is if you delete the marker, you actually delete the section. So if I delete this outro marker, it actually deletes the section first, then it deletes the marker if I press delete again. So that's another reason why I don't really like these too much. But the payoff with these is it makes it incredibly easy to build out your arrangement. So again, what I wanted was verse, chorus, verse, chorus, right? So I'm going to hold option to duplicate and drag my chorus over right after my first verse and it automatically inserts that section. So then for my verse, I could do the same thing. Let's copy this over here. And then one more chorus option, drag and drop it in. And then if I want one more chorus after the bridge, I can do that. And you can also reorder your sections very easily. You just grab the section, move it where you want it to go without holding option, and it'll just simply shuffle those two sections so that's the magic of these arrangement markers is the regions that are in the arrangement are tied to the location and position of the arrangement markers. So they're really handy for that. But like I said, there are so many drawbacks with them. And I've had glitchy issues with them in the past that I don't really use them. And also when you hide your global tracks, you can't see them anymore. So what you may opt to do is go to marker here and select create from arrangement markers. So you have a duplicate copy. You have your arrangement markers plus your regular markers. And when you collapse your global tracks, you'll see your section markers there again. So that's an overview of using markers, arrangement markers, and arrangement building in Logic Pro. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.